So <clears throat> I want to continue what I was talking about on channel one over here on two. The son of perdition. And how he gets his power. As I said over there, if you go and we and, and we realize the only way, because there are people over here that's not on channel one by by vice versa, blah blah blah. The only way he gets his power is until after, and that's what I named that video over there, is until after the harvest has been collected. I don't care what the world might tell you or what worldly believers might tell you. The Bible is in order. It's not out of order. Christ gives the son of perdition his power. He is the only one that is worthy of opening up the seals. We read Revelation 5. But he doesn't open those seals until after the bride is collected into heaven. The seven churches of Yah. The seven spirits of Yah. Then, once everything has been collected into the storehouse safely put away, as it was in Pharaoh's day, about the seven kind and the seven diseased or starved, the seven healthy corn and the seven bad corn, and Joseph had to interpret the dream, and the plenteous cannot be known in the land during a season of dearth. Now, people, oh, we're in dirt right now, and this is badness. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a fallen world. That's true. But the peace of God are here with those who are obedient to him and fear him. Those who are not are the ones you see out here committing acts of evil but not widespread, folks. That's the difference. You have little pockets of things happening. But the mystery of the iniquity is already at work. It's already at play. Okay? The mystery of it. There's two places that the son of perdition shows up and that's John 17 and 12 and that's 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3. There's a falling away first. We always talk about these dual meanings and then it says, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Satan is perdition and he has a son that will arrive on the scene first but he will be given power as though he will be a messiah or a mashiach which he will be a false mashiach and the Jews the orthodox Jew will usher him in and hold him up to the world after the calamity is passed by six months I did the study on Esther chapter one over there on channel two. It talks about 104 score days. The king showed everybody his kingdom. And then after the 180 days had expired, then, he, then there was a seven day feast. But on earth, it'll be 180 days, six months. Because we do know that the scripture says, Revelation eight, there's a space of between a half an hour, 30 minutes in between seals being open. So that means every 30 days and you got six of them, that's 180, okay? You know, this is basic math. It's not trigonometry or, 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 or algebra, or not. it's just basic math, arithmetic. And then after that, it's over with. Revelation chapter six, 17. 17 is the number of victory. Because now 
the great wrath of God has begun. Typology of Esther chapter 1, verse 4 and verse 5. And I said over there that verse 5 is Penta. The church is in the kingdom when tribulation starts. And then you have great trib. Revelation chapter 6, 17. That's God's number, 17. The cue ball people believe that that's their number as well, but they're under strong delusion. They're under a CIA PSYOP, and they don't even know that, they bring, that they're being brainwashed, okay, into a honeypot. <clears throat> so, to kind of continue from that video to help people out, yeah, what you see is what you see. But again, common sense. Most of us, somebody made a, a stupid comment the other day. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say it was stupid because I made a stupid video. I've been making them lately. That's poking fun at the mockers and scoffers. But somebody said, well, that's great for you. There's a lot of people that who can't shop in a clean store. <laughs> Some of the comments I'm thinking, you know, I said most people. I'm thinking most people. When a person said most people, I'm like, Ooh, well, all of Michigan shops and stores like that, all of Ohio, all of Indiana, all of Florida, okay? People in other countries have clean stores. So sometimes, you know, the Nutty Buddy, you know, people eat it up a lot and they be off that Nutty Buddy. And, you know, you can tell it <laughs> by the way they comment. But we do know, and this is how you know that God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son to save the world that might be saved through him. When you go, you know, and I try to get people to stop chopping up Revelation 4 and 5, stop snatching it out of the book, read it. Because the love of Christ for the bride is to remove her out of the way before he is seen opening these seals and giving the son of perdition power. He gives him the white horse and the crown and the bow because no one else is worthy to open the seals. The book don't say Satan is in heaven opening the book of seals and he give his son power. No, that's not what it says at all. Christ opens. He is the only one that is worthy. Now, after them seven, after them six, there's all other kind of bad stuff. It just goes downhill from that point. And so once Christ knows that he has his basket of fruit, now he can let the pit bull and the rock wilder off the chain. People love to comment about, oh, Chris has been killed a long time. We've been in tribulation. So we've been in tribulation for a hundred years. Stop that. People been dying in the name of Jesus since the days of Paul and Paul was killing Christians because he was zealous for the law of God and Christ had to interrupt him and call him Saul. So Christians have been dying for a long time. <clears throat> That's why when you see in Revelation chapter seven, there is a number that John could not number outside of the 144,000 that were seen. Jesus said, there's a people that's not my people but they will become my people. So, now let's get to, let's get over here to Revelation real quick. Really, like I said, I want to kind of continue, get you guys over there that haven't been over there to check that out. Revelation 6 and 1. This is very important, folks. This is all in order. None of this has happened yet. John said, when I saw, when the lamb opened one of the seals, this is the first one, and I heard it as were a noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts said, come and see. This is what's happening. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown. That's authority. G 
given unto him. But who gave it to him? Let's stay right there. We know in verse 1. Now, this don't happen until the seven churches, the seven spirits of Yah, the bride of Christ, is before the throne first. Okay? Second verse, John said, I saw. First verse, he said, I saw. He is witnessing. This was done a thousand, two thousand, three thousand plus years ago. He was showed future events. And he believed them by faith. But yet here we are in that said future time and we read this and people still doubt it. And they say, oh, that's not for another 300 years. <laughs> that's how some people think. Verse 3. John saw him open up the second. So John sees him open up every single one. And he sees the manifestation of what's happening on earth at the same time. While he's, understand that folks, when we get up there, we're going to see time from the beginning to the end. Just from left to right. That quick. We're going to see it just like that. It started because eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. That's what the words say. So we're going to see from the beginning to the end and probably past that. Are you ready for that? Because John was given a vision. John was at this time. He was showed. Okay. He saw because the word is clear. It was given unto him. But who gave the son of perdition the crown and the bow and his white horse? Who gave him the authority to go forth conquering and to conquer? People can't, it's hard for people to admit this, but this is what the Bible tells us. None of this can happen, though, until Jesus takes his bride first. If verse 2 says, and a crown was given unto him. So somebody handed and he received. Jesus handed authority to the son of perdition, but not before, ladies and gentlemen. And it cannot happen before the bride is collected. And if you say that Jesus is going to hand, because this is what it says, it was given to him. Well, what does verse one say? I saw Christ open up the seal, the book of authority, the, the book of judgment. He was the only one worthy that he took the book from the hand of the father and he began to open. So that means when he opened, he gave, as it says in verse two, he gave the son of perdition the bow and the crown and the white horse for him to go on to conquer and to conquer, conquering and to conquer. He gave him the authority. To conquer. To kill. Why would he why would he do that, folks? Because as he told the Pharisees and the, and the scribes and all the rest of them, when they tried to trip him up about the money, if that's Caesar's, give it back to him. But what did he say after that? Render unto God what belongs to him. So that's been rendered when the trumpet blow. Once that's been collected back, the word conquering and to conquer, what is the son of perdition here to do? To kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus gives him that full-blown authority to kill, steal, and destroy. Why? Because my people are back with me as the bride. Revelation 4, verse 5. Revelation 5, verse 6. And when he does that, Jesus opens up a second seal. 
And then in verse four, Jesus releases. These things don't happen on their own. Jesus is giving the authority to release the hounds. Who let the dogs out? Jesus is letting the dogs out. The red one goes out. I just, every time I read this, I think about Voltron. The red one goes out. And Jesus allows the red horse to take peace from the earth. The first two seals are very important because Jesus is, a, is, is authority over, over all. But if you slow down and chew this thing the correct way, and for those that continue to say, yeah, we're in, we're another delusional that's not here anymore. We're, we're well into the sixth seal. I said, you got to be delusional. Got to be off that nutty buddy. So do you honestly think after reading Revelation 4, and five, Revelation 5 and 6. Do you honestly think? Because the word is clear. Jesus gives this authority. You think Jesus would, would, would release all this evil on earth. Knowing that he has not collected the bride yet. Huh? What? He sets the red horse loose, which had power to take the peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. If the spirit of peace is taken from the earth, and now they, it doesn't say they have the power, but they do have the power, that they should kill one another. But yet Christ would give the son of perdition his power and authority to conquer, to kill, steal, and destroy. He would give the red horse his power and take peace from the earth that people should just willy-nilly start killing each other. And Jesus knows that the bride is on earth. Then our faith is in vain. That's what Paul said, God forbid. That we believed for nothing, but that's not Bible. And there was given unto him a great sword. Who is him? The one that went forward on the red horse. And that great sword, meditating in the word and, and, and counseling of the Holy Spirit. That great sword, because the Bible says uh, uh, there is a sword but then there's a great sword. So John didn't understand, as I said before, probably what nuclear bombs and what are to, he just knew it in his time to be a weapon. So he said he gave unto him a great sword. So a great sword, not just any sword, because the Bible does say they had a sword, killage. This is great sword. So, so if we know that, that on earth it's every 30 days, okay, every 30 days, but in heaven it's 30 minutes between every seal, but on earth it's 30 days, time is different. So if this is the second seal, so that's two months in after the raptoral, after the harvest, the basket of fruit is taken and it's safely with the bridegroom. So a month after, a month after, after, because the first seal happens, okay? Second seal happens, that's two months, okay? So in two months after, the great sword is talked about. 
First seal, son of perdition, crown bow, authority, white horse, to conquer, conquering and to conquer, to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay. Verse three, when he opens the second seal, it's a red horse. That's two months. And the second month after we're out of here, nuclear war happens. The red horse was given a great sword. All hell is breaking loose on earth. This, this, the timeline is perfect. All hell is breaking loose on earth because the red horse is taking peace from the earth. Peace is gone. Start, Second Thessalonians chapter two. He that now lets us let until he is taken out of the way, then that wicked be revealed. So guess what? Two months in after we're out, our after we're up out of here, all hell breaks loose. The red horse takes the spirit of peace from the earth. Chaos is, is, is ensuing. It's the reason why I make them goofy videos about tribulation at Kroger's and at the mall to prove a point. When humanity loses control, loses authority, it don't take long for people to lose their marbles. It don't take long. You see it on TV with riots. Hurricane Katrina. It don't. When the fabric of authority leaves, just temporarily, what ensues? Looting. Rioting. It don't take long. But now imagine the spirit of peace is taken. The Bible says they will be given uh, uh, they, will, they, will, they will have the ability to kill each other. And then there was given to him a great sword. That's two months after. Because you got to configure, you got to, you got to figure. It's gonna be mad confusion when the harvest happens. War is gonna be on pause for a little bit. But then Satan is riding through. His son, son of perdition, is riding through. And they will cause those nukes to drop. But according to the scripture, that's the second seal. So if dum dums like, oh, we're into the sixth seal, we're into the fifth one. Well, you're not studied. Because one and two ain't even happened yet. We're getting close to them happening. You understand? And when the third one is open, that's the black horse, Voltron. Okay. Says he had a pair of balances in his hand. We're going to be at war. Well, we're not going to be as, as, as humanality. They're going to be at war. The cost of living is going to be high. It's going to cost you a whole lot of money to buy just bread and, el uh, and milk and eggs. Why? Because the infrastructure of the world will be broken because manufacturing will be dead. If you do a research study, find out how long does it take for a country to starve Look at Panama right now. It didn't take long for that little country down there to break down in South America. The truckers gave a warning that if we stop delivering food across the country, this was back when Trudeau wasn't allowing people to come in because of that goofy uh, salmonella chicken soup law he had out there. I'm talking stupid on purpose. The truck drivers are giving a warning, a stern warning. If we stop delivering food across the country, just 40% of this country would starve. Go back and look up that little, go back and look up them videos about <clears throat> what the truck drivers said if they stopped delivering food. Think about how much food is in every grocery store running around here right now. And if there's nobody delivering the food, whatever is in the stores, ladies and gentlemen, is depleted in a matter of minutes, in a matter of minuets, because rioting will take place. The spirit of peace is over every single one of us, even if even those of us that act foolishly sometimes, you are still held in check for a few seconds before you do something stupid. Because afterwards, I should have followed my first mind. When that spirit is taken, there will be no inhibitions, nothing holding people back from getting it on in the flesh. 
from going in and knocking folk in the head. Just like all these uh, 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 apocalyptic movies that we see being made over the years. It ain't going to take, let that siren go off. That's heard statewide. That's heard nationwide after we're out of here. Let that siren go off that you hear me playing in the one minute videos. People are going to lose their marbles. Especially with the confusion of watching planes fall out the sky and crash, car crashes all over the place because drivers just suddenly disappear or the body drops dead, however guy gonna do it. You talk about mass confusion. We're in the tribulation right now. We're in the tribulation right now. That's what the Bible says. We're in the tribulation right now. People still getting married. Still go to the theater right now. We still got movie premieres. You can still go grocery shopping in clean, undisturbed grocery stores. Because that's the first thing that's going to get attacked. Is grocery stores and toilet paper. <laughs> Fires everywhere. It's going to be hard for you to get rest at night. Pap, 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 pap. All you're going to hear outside is hollering and screaming. People's cribs being ransacked and, and broken into in the middle of the night because the spirit of peace will be gone from this earth. Yeah. This is what we pray to be worthy of escape from. And Christ is going to give evil authority. He gives. It was given unto him. Who gave it to him? Christ gave it to him. But not until after Christ got his woman. Same thing with any of us uh, 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 God-fearing men. Let me move my kid, my children, and my woman out the way, my wife out the way, then we can get it on. But I'm not going to fire no shot until I get my family out the way. Once I get my family out the way, then it's on and popping. Okay. Soon as I know they safe. <laughs> Soon as I know they out the way. This is just how we do. This is how we operate on general basis. Oh, they out the way, they good, y'all all right? Oh, okay, let's go. That's what's getting ready to happen. Understand it, no, folks. I don't care what these what these jibble heads telling you. We're in this and we're in that. They in their feelings and they in the flesh. Because if you read the Bible, it clearly tells you we are not. We are not. We're in the days of sorrow for sure. But two months after we're out of here, according to the scripture, a great sword will be given to the rider of that red horse. People are going to be panicked. Don't you see it happening now? Don't you see the setup for it now? The dress rehearsal all over the world, all these different demonstrations and all these different jihad things going on and people operating not in the spirit of God, but in the spirit of hate. Now imagine when the spirit of peace is taken, how that's going to be all over, okay? Just a little Bible study, folks. Just a little Bible study. I'll look back at y'all later.